Welcome to AFI Fest 2020, presented by Audi. I'm Claudia Puig, Senior Programmer for AFI Fest. And first, I want to thank all of the supporters of the festival, our presenting sponsor, Audi, our AFI members, and you, our audience. We're here today with a filmmaker and actress for the wonderful and deeply moving film, The Father. We have director Florian Zeller and actors Sir Anthony Hopkins and Olivia Coleman. What a wonderfully poignant and ingenious film. Uh, there's so much humanity in it. And, and thanks to your script, Florian, and the perfectly pitched and nuanced performances of Olivia and Anthony, because of the way it's told, we're so psychologically immersed and we feel off kilter and confused from early on, um, feeling Anthony's confusion and disorientation. And the way in which you tell the story, Florian, intensifies our understanding and compassion um, for Anthony's character. Kudos to all of you for making such an emotionally urgent and insightful film about dementia. Thank you so much for being here with us. Florian, you adapted this film from your play. And initially, what, did, what inspired you to write this particular play and then to make it into a film? So as you said, it, it was a play. I wrote it something like eight years ago. And to tell you the truth, I think that the, the beginning of the, the writing was very personal because uh, I was directly concerned by this issue. Uh, I was raised by my grandmother and she started to suffer from dementia when I was uh, 15. So I was really directly uh, in the middle of it in a way. But, um, you know, you don't do a play or a film just to tell your own story. I think it's not enough. But when the play was on stage, first in France and then in many countries, I was always very surprised to see that the, the response of the audience was always the same and very powerful. And people were, came always to us after the performances to, to share their own story. And I realized that it was a very um, universal theme and that everyone is concerned nowadays, unfortunately, but by this issue, meaning that everyone has a father, everyone has to deal or will have to deal with this fear or with the dilemma you know, which is uh, what do you do with the people you love when they are starting to suffer from, from, from dementia. So I thought that something was at stake. And, you know, to me, cinema is a lot about sharing emotions. And I think that this issue uh, was uh, an occasion, uh, uh, an opportunity to, to, to share those emotions. Absolutely. Um, Anthony, you commit so completely to the part and you move us so profoundly. We identify with your memory impaired character so deeply um, and your character is so complex. I wanted to ask you what specifically drew you to the project and what specifically drew you to this role? The, the script, um, the screenplay by Christopher Hampton. My agent, uh, Jeremy Barber sent me the script and said, are you interested? And it was one of those rare ones which grab you and uh, because it's a small compact film it's not a big studio film and that's what's so attractive about it but it was so brilliantly written so I met with Florian and Chris of Hampton and um, I, I really I couldn't believe my luck because I was then it was about three years ago I was 80 and I'm still working they wanted me to do it and Florian and I met him <laughs> and um, I couldn't believe how fortunate that was. Those scripts come along once in a while. I mean, I, Silence of the Lambs was one of them. Remains of the Day, Nixon, The Edge by David Mamet, and this one. So I was very fortunate and, um, and hoping that they would wait for me because I, that Florian and uh, the production would wait for me because I was going to do the two popes in Rome with Jonathan Price. And I, I thought, I hope I get it. I hope they wait for me. They did. And then, when, and then Olivia came along. And one of the best times I think I've had in a long, long time. And I've been very fortunate in the last five years, been given some terrific things to do, like King Lear and The Dresser, with the great Richard Ayres director. And, um, you know, to, to work with some great top-notch actors like Olivia. And, you know, and uh, so I'm very fortunate. Well, we were very fortunate for your performance. It was amazing. Olivia, you so powerfully convey Anne's dedication, her vulnerability, her love, her sadness, her frustration. Such a, a complex character as well. And I have the same question for you. What drew you to this part? 
Well, I could say exactly the same as Tony, but um, the, the script, it's always for me down to the script and the script turned up and it was amazing and I just really wanted to do it. And I loved the idea that Tony was going, I hope they wait for me. Can you imagine saying to Tony Hopkins, no, nah, I'm sorry, we're not going to wait. I love that idea. But, um, so I, I heard that he was on board and then, you know, I just sort of went, yes, please. And it's so beautiful. It's all there. You don't really have to do anything. Mm. And watching Tony, being in a room with someone like Tony, it's, it's, it's easy to, to play off him because it's all so present and there and real and, and lovely. So and as he said, we did have a really lovely time. Mm. We got on well. We were in you know, good hands. Florian was amazing. Was yeah. The fact that, uh, um, so I'm sure you'll bring this up, but at Florian's first film was just astonishing. It, you know, he steered that ship with such command and such calmness. It was just uh, no, an absolute pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Florian, uh, it is amazing that this is your first film, and kudos to you. Um, we get a few clues along the way, um, and then we think we get our bearings, and then the rug is pulled out from under us, and we're never quite on firm ground with your, your film. Um, and I'm wondering, this must have been a writing challenge to kind of achieve the sense in which the viewer is perpetually unmoored. Um, how did you develop this concept of this destabilizing way in which you created the, uh, the story. It was the, the narrative of the play worked the same way. Uh, so when we worked with uh, Christopher Hampton about the, on, on the script play, we make the decision, we made the decision to, to keep that narrative, which is basically to try to tell the story from the inside and to, to allow the audience to to experience a slice of dementia. I, I, we wanted that film to be not only a film, but if possible, a real experience. And, and so it was a lot about playing with reality, what is real, what is not real, uh, to, to have some contradictions in the situations and to never help the audience to, f uh, to, to, to find the exit of the maze, you know? I wanted the audience to be in a very active position and to, to question all the time what they are witnessing. Uh, and sometimes it's frustrating, you know, and sometimes it's, it's, uh, there is some anxiety because you don't exactly understand what is going on, and, but you try to figure it out. And actually this is exactly what the main character is going through. And step by step we feel or we understand that in a way we are in his head. And it was a way to play with this feeling of disorientation. But I didn't want just to film the play. Um, so I, what I really had in mind is to try to, to, to make it very cinematic and to use um, what the cinema can do, what the cinema do. And that's why uh, I remember when I wrote the script, I had the, the layout of the apartment really precise in my head because it was like one of the main characters, you know, and, and to allow us to, to play with it. So we had this apartment and at the beginning it's very... Uh, obvious, you know, this is Anthony's apartment and there is no doubt about that. And step by step, some information, some situations uh, make us doubt about it. And, and then we play with the furniture, with the color, with the proportions so that you recognize the place. You know, it's the same apartment, but you have this strange feeling to be at the same time in the same apartment and somewhere else. And, and it, it was a very, to me, a very cinematic way to tell the story and to use what, what, only, what, what the cinema can do, only the cinema. And also in the editing with Yorgos, uh, it was the same, to use what the cinema can do to increase this feeling or disorientation and to be as close as possible as all the emotions. For example, to, to go in a minute, in a second, to, to one frame, to another, to one character, to another, so that you, 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 you go with Anthony in the whole journey. Absolutely. I, I saw the play here in Los Angeles at the Pasadena Playhouse and, and then to see the film, it was a, a much deeper uh, experience. They're, they're both wonderful, of course, but I, there was a, a particular aspect that the cinema can add. Also, those wonderful close-ups of the eyes, the, the tearing eyes, the faces of Olivia and Anthony uh, add so much depth to it. Yeah, because when you have two genius like Anthony and Olivia, you know, you have, you, you want to be so close to, to, to feel exactly what, what goes through them, what goes through them. It's like, to me, it was like magical to, 
to be here to witness uh, this amazing way of embodying a character and an emotion. It was something very, uh, that I will never forget. Mm. Absolutely. Anthony, you play this character with such a unique blend of vulnerability and recalcitrance. You're cantankerous, you're charming. Uh, it, it's such a, a range, you, you know, you ping pong between so many different emotions. Was there any particular inspiration that you drew on to play this character? Uh, we've all known people who've had dementia. I wondered if there was someone that you had had in your life or something that you uh, sort of used as an inspiration. Um, m both my parents died uh, having been spared dementia um, with full faculties. My mother was 89. She was just tired at the end. So my experience of dementia, I've observed it in somebody's family, and it is painful to watch the, uh, the family react because they are living in the same kind of hell because they don't know how to cope. They're much, so much like Olivia in the film. For me, it was, you know... It, it, it was easy because I'm 82 now. I'm at that age. But also, I've been doing this a long time, so I don't need to get into it, you know. And Olivia's the same. Uh, it's, but people ask me, how do you prepare? Well, I just learn the lines and show up. It sounds trite, but it, what else can I do? Because this, the clue is in the script. And I say to young students and actors, I said, it's all there in the text. You don't need to rewrite. You don't. It's there. It's there for you to do. It's the roadmap. And that's the simplest way I can put it. Um, it's the roadmap. And so I, I remember the first scene with Olivia and myself. We, it was the very first scene in the film. In fact, when I'm sitting in the chair and she comes in and says, hello, I said, who are you? So it doesn't take, you know, great mental gymnastics. You think... The, the common sense of the actor saying, well, this is the, so for example, I didn't have to, I didn't have to take in that there was a different set. I just wandered through the same set. You know, acting is very simple if you make it simple. And I, that's what I try to do. And uh, I guess Olivia does think the simpler you keep it. And I say to, I'm working with a young actor at the moment by Zoom and he's young and he wants to, you know, he's really good. But I said, just simplify, simplify, simplify. Just relax. Don't, don't push anything. And that's the trick of it. And the more relaxed you are, um, the more intuitive you become, the more the feeling is coming. For example, I played two parts. I played King Lear 35 years ago, and I was okay, technically, but I was too young. And I played him three years ago, and I've had 35 years of more experience of life. And suddenly it all, I think, ah, that's what it means. And with this man, Ah, the cantankerousness. The, I've got all that in me, you know. Acting is, we always play ourselves. We think we have to add on to it or we have to get into a corner. And Well, that's if you want to do that, that's fine. But I can't do that. Um, so I make it easier for myself to just be myself and, you know, put on the clothes and do it and say good morning, have a cup of tea or coffee or whatever, have some breakfast. Okay, here we go, action, and you do it. It's, it's that simple. So it's not, it doesn't have to be agony. It's, I would think it's that simple I, when you're a consummate professional like you, but maybe not for everyone else. Um, Olivia, what, what do you think about that? Uh, do you feel the same way? I, I feel exactly the same way. And it's so nice to hear someone who I have always adored watching. I love finding out that he feels the same. That um, I agree that every, every part I've ever played it's it's me it's we're all so multifaceted we're all grumpy and nice and angry and you know we have we just have to find those bits of us there's um it's all there i think i don't know i can't add anything to that i think he, he put it so beautifully that's exactly how i feel i'm very pleased i feel the same as anthony hopkins <laughs> <laughs> may, may i add something could i add what? something Oh, please, I, yeah. do. Absolutely. Well, all, also, apart from working with Olivia, the remarkable cast, and with Florian, this is first film, uh, was actually Ben Smithard's lighting. The <gasps> and yeah. the set, as Florian described, the set is part of the, is part of the, as another character. And what is extraordinary about it was the lighting, the depressing afternoon in a suburban flat in London, 
the heat of an August afternoon or whatever. And for some reason, I don't know, I find that maybe back in childhood, I find that deeply moving and depressing. Not depressing, but sort of melancholy that this time of life, this man wandering around and looking down into the street and seeing people passing by and the sound of a motor car or sound of children in the street. That to me evokes so much emotion of memory. I wouldn't say pain, but because we all have that. Life is messy. Life is what we are, you know. And memories I have are not painful, but sad, you know, childhood loneliness and all that. So that plus the lighting of Ben Smith and um, the whole crew, everyone, uh, the concentration without it being... Meryl Streep said something very interesting once. Somebody said about the intensity. She said, no, it's not about intensity. She was talking about working with Clint Eastwood. You know? She said, it's not about intensity. It's in fact, it's the opposite. Being prepared and just letting it go. Mm -hmm. So that, that for me is, you know, look at the set and you see the, the sun coming through the shutters and you think, oh, God, this is it. You didn't have to act. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, Florian, I wanted to ask you, in some ways I thought of this as kind of a, a horror chamber piece and because the terror comes from our inability to grab onto things and, and we, you know, we feel unmoored, um, which can be terrifying if we can never quite feel our footing. Um, was that, did you think of it as kind of a horror uh, or I know you called it, a tr I think a tragic farce was the subtitle for the original play? Yeah, I, I'm not sure that I would use it for the film. Uh, but again, you, you, we are lost a bit in this journey and it could be uh, disturbing. And, uh, but I think that the more we, we go, go through the film, the more we, we allow our brain to let it go and not to, to, tr to stop trying to understand everything. Because at the beginning we are, as I said, active, trying to understand who is, who, who is this stranger? Is it the same apartment or another one? this piece of furniture, it was not the same. So we are in questioning everything and step by step, because I think this is how life works in a way. It was a way to, to, to let the brain stop and, and then to let some, something else appear, which was the emotions. And as soon as we do that, I think the whole journey, the whole labyrinth, the whole maze become very clear. We know where we are. We know what we are talking about. And we just feel that we are talking about people that are connected together in this uh, painful uh, situation. And this is all what it is about to, you know, humanity, I would say. So it, in some ways, it's sort of what Sir Anthony was saying too about letting go. It's just going yeah. with the emotion. Yes, I think it's the hardest part to let it go, to be simple <laughs> and to be true in this very simple way. And, and um, this is what Anthony just said, but uh, I witnessed, I, I was, I witnessed, sorry, uh, this on set, meaning that I saw his instinct and Olivia's instinct. It was, everything was instinctive in a way, you know. And what adds to that Absolutely. is Olivia's reaction when her dad is becoming vicious and spiteful and Olivia's reaction was so painful to watch. <laughs> I thought, yeah, God, what a, oh. what a monster I was, because she said she'd be trying so hard to get me to understand, and it was pointless, and she couldn't survive it, and suddenly she'd start crying. I thought, God, this must be a nightmare for people to live in in the family, and you're trying so desperately. And um, it's, it's painful to watch. My mother had the same thing with my father when he was in great pain. He was dying of heart disease and he was so depressed and so frightened. And I could see her cracking, you know, and, she, and that was painful to observe. Yeah. Yes, Olivia, it, it seems at times that you were, you know, you're trying so hard and you're holding back the tears. And, and it just seemed like, sometimes I felt like you were on a knife's edge. And, and it just, I kept thinking how hard that must be to, to be in that place emotionally as an actor. Uh, well, no, not really. That's um, because we we it's in the very moment that it's happening, it's it's upsetting. But we know that uh, they'll say cut. We'll rearrange something, do the light. We'll have a chat. T you know, Tony and I go and have a sit in the gossip. And um, I couldn't stay in that place. I couldn't. Um, uh, 
as Tony says, some some people that's what they do, and uh, I think that would drive me slightly mad. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I'm happy to, to yes. go in, feel it very much, but then to come out again. Um, uh, yeah, so it's also it's we're lucky in a way that it's very cathartic that we can have a good go to work, have a good shout or a good cry or whatever it is, and then go home. And uh, many people don't get the chance to do either of those things. So. Um, I think it's quite healthy, weirdly, <laughs> to, to you know. place of therapy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's actually saying it's uh, like telling the brain at the end of the day, I'm only pretending, I'm only playing, acting. So don't take yeah. it seriously because the brain doesn't have much common sense. You know, it takes it seriously. <laughs> and think, oh, so we're going to be ill today. And so you have to trick it and say, no, I'm just pretending. I'm just playing, yeah. relax, go and play in the garden. <laughs> because when you, when you get it so intense it's an unhealthy way to live and acting is a healthier way to express emotions i don't know how but without taking oneself too seriously you know taking the work seriously and doing it but yes the brain saying okay this is just a game just make believe like kids playing make believe you know well, yeah. in light of that, did you rehearse beforehand? Did you discuss the characters? What was the process leading up to uh, the shooting? As Tony said, we, we, when we first met, I remember, you remember probably this meeting, Anthony, uh, I, I, I came to Los Angeles to, to meet with, with Anthony and we had a breakfast together. And after the breakfast, uh, you took me in, in your arms and we said, okay, let's do this movie. But... Oh. The two pops was postponed, so the, our film was postponed as well. And uh, it never crossed my mind that I could do something else that waits for Anthony, of course. But <laughs> so we, have, we, have a, we had another year uh, to, to, to send emails and to share ideas about music, we, about many things. So it was, it was great because when we, we, the first day when we started to, to shoot, I mean, uh, it was as if we knew each other very well. But also, I didn't want to, to film a play, so we, we, we decided not to rehearse before, you know, because we wanted to, to keep a fresh energy and the instinct about it. So we, we just rehearsed a, a bit every day, quickly, before every scene, you know, to, to keep the, the, um, the energy of discovering the situations. Mm. Did you, um, the two of you, Anthony and Olivia, did you discuss the characters at all or did you just allow it to, to happen um, organically? No, I don't think we did, did we? I think oh. we met, we, can, we got on, completely fell in love. I mean, the, you know, it was sort of the idea that someone as, you know, as impressive and as beautiful as Tony is starting to crumble. You didn't need to discuss any more than that. You know, it was all there. And um, I don't think we just did, did we? I think we just met and um, knew we'd be fine, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because there's nothing really to discuss. I, you know, I, I talk about this young actor. I worked with some young actors and I say, don't try to be anyone else. You are you. Whether you're playing Hamlet or what are you doing? Just, just be you. And nature is so... Calm. Human beings are so complex, good, bad, dark, and different, whatever we are. We're messy, you know, and uh, we have our weaknesses and our strengths. So we, uh, we sit comfortably with those parts of ourselves. As we get older, more experience as time goes by, the whole process becomes easier and easier. And I, I watched actors over the years. I've, watched, I've worked with some great actors. Watched Lawrence Olivia, for example, and there was an ease about these people and they didn't make a big deal about it. They'd come in and say, action and do it. And um, it's wonderful to watch that. So I longed when I was young actor to be like that. And uh, <laughs> gradually you, know, you, you grow into it and you think, okay, well, if I'm lucky to be around and still working and it makes it easier. There's no, it doesn't have to be agony and pain. And, and I do find that when they say, oh, we're going to have five weeks of rehearsal, they're like, oh, God, why? <laughs> you can't, you can't sit, pretending to sit in a car which on two in a hotel room pretending it's a car. It's so... <laughs> get into the damn car and drive the damn thing and be real. That's what film is like. <laughs> I wanted to ask all of you what you felt you learned or, or what came to you uh, as a result of having made this film what were were there any insights that, that you had into either the process of aging or just about life itself 
from reading the script first time, it was the first time I'd ever, first time anyone had, had shown me what it might be like from inside the head of someone suffering with dementia. That, you know, what you know to be right, you'd look to the side and suddenly it's not right. And the confusion and that people would try and explain it to you all the time and bring you back. But actually the way to do it maybe is not to do that, to, to go with them, to be confused or shocked by something three times a day is so awful. And it's the first time I'd ever really seen it clearly, for, although it's difficult to see it clearly because it's... Um, I was so impressed by the way it was presented and I haven't forgotten that, that it, you know, what it must be like for that person. Absolutely. Well, my, my mother, when she was very ill towards the end, she died 12, 17 years ago and uh, her only signal of maybe disturbance in her mind was she was convinced people were stealing from her. I had a nurse. Oh. She knew that this lady was stealing her jewellery. She didn't have much jewellery, she had a couple of earrings. And I uh, had to explain to her, no, nobody's stealing anything. She put them in a drawer. But she was convinced that somebody was... And that's the terrible loneliness and the anger she was experiencing, that somebody was stealing from her. And I had to gently explain to her, I said, no, nobody's stealing, they're here. And that's so tough to comprehend, mm -hmm. watch that, to witness that in an old person is already feeling frightened of death and lonely and isolated and that's awful so i remember that you know well, that makes me think of, of your character and his watch you know and he held on to that and then in the end he says you know i have this watch and i know i it, it, and that the watch was such an interesting symbol yes time yeah time slipping away time disappearing mm -hmm. time being stolen um Florina, you are a novelist and playwright, so I'm sure you filled it with symbols like that. But um, did you? Can you tell us a little bit about the watch symbolism? Yeah, it's a symbol. It's 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 a symbol. Sorry, and at the same time, it's just a watch. You know, mm -hmm. uh, of course, I I think this is the you know when you when you started to become paranoiac when you think as you said that p people are stealing you you know it's it's the beginning of this disorientation so it was just a, a concrete thing to to express the beginning of the 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 bearings that were disappearing but to answer your question about what i learned i would say that um you know my dream was really to make that film and it was really to make that film with anthony and with olivia and i'm aware that i'm so lucky that it happened that way. And uh, I remember when I had that in mind, it was a dream because everything starts with a dream always. I remember that it looked a bit unlikely, you know, or not easy to fulfill. And so I learned that, you know, until someone comes and tell you uh, it's not possible, it means that potentially it is possible, which is, I think, what I learned. <laughs> Love that. Well, both of you, uh, Olivia and Anthony, of course, are Oscar winners, and I am sure you don't do it at all for the awards, but it certainly seems like you will, uh, you will be in the conversation, and uh, I, two of the best performances I've seen. So Thank you. Aww, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for being here uh, today. We are just so honored to have you all here and that your film is, is with us. Um, for those watching, please tell your friends. The film is available to screen until the end of the festival, which is October 22nd. We'd love to hear from you on social media, hashtag AFI Fest. Join us for more great films and virtual events at fest.afi.com. And happy watching. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.